revolution in consciousness in the 60s. Wherever he went, thousands of people were there to greet and honor him. His name was A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, and he brought the Hare Krishna religion to American shores. He even influenced the Beatles, and they helped spark interest in Krishna. Hi, I'm Manya Sergi. And I'm Larry Laurent. Today we're going to explore the life and character of the man who influenced the lives of millions and made Hare Krishna a household word. At different times, Swami Prabhupada was known as a scholar, a philosopher, a cultural ambassador, a prolific author, a religious leader, a spiritual teacher, a social critic, and a holy man. He was not one of those modern entrepreneurial gurus who come to the West with slickly packaged, watered-down versions of Eastern spirituality. Swami Prabhupada was, rather, a true holy man, a person who is called Acharya, which means a master who teaches by his own example. After arriving in the United States in 1965 at the age of 69, Swami Prabhupada formed the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. This later developed into a worldwide spiritual community with hundreds of centers, schools, temples, and farms, with thousands of dedicated disciples. To have achieved all this in only 12 years was a remarkable achievement. But in addition, Swami Prabhupada also wrote and published over 80 volumes of translation and commentary on the great classics of ancient India. His books were welcomed with great critical acclaim by the academic community, and they were soon accepted in many universities and libraries around the world. Before passing away in 1977, Swami Prabhupada had succeeded in transmitting the profound wisdom of the ancient Vedic culture in a way that was clearly understandable to the modern man. He could explain difficult philosophical concepts to people who were totally unfamiliar with the complex Indian religious tradition. Between 1966 and 1977, Swami Prabhupada circled the globe 11 times. Whenever he traveled, he would emerge daily into the chill and quiet of the early morning, and he would take a lengthy stroll with an entourage of students, disciples, and guests. Swami Prabhupada also appeared very frequently on American television. Let's take a look at one of those interviews. You founded the Hare Krishna movement some seven years ago in 1967, did you not? Yes. Um, in a capsule, what is the movement? Uh, the movement is to awaken God consciousness of the human being. The uh, human being is distinct, distinguished from the animals, that the animals cannot understand what is God. Mm -hmm. And the human being also uh, does not understand what is God, then he's enemy. I see. And so your movement is to bring about an understanding of God yes. among human beings. Yes. And Hare Krishna means what? Hare Krishna means addressing uh, the energy of God. Mm -hmm. Hare means the energy of God, and Krishna means God. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you were here yesterday and to attend your annual festival that yeah. was held here in Golden Gate Park, and we were there too. Mm. And in fact, here it is. Mm. Um, a few thousand people uh, came out to hear it. How many people are now uh, disciples um, of the Krishna consciousness movement? Uh, dedicated life, about 10,000. About 10,000 dedicated In ones. the Western world. Mm -hmm. um, Your Grace, is there any significance in all, at all in the shaved head? Why are heads shaved? We keep ourselves very clean, that's all. 
No, it's just a cleanliness thing. Yeah. Is there any significance in the color uh, of the road? At least, at least uh, at the present moment, people think that uh, by keeping long hair, it becomes very beautiful. I see. Yes. So we are against that. Mm -hmm. Just as simple as that. <laughs> is there any significance in the yellow robes? Uh, yellow robe uh, is the mm, dress those who are dedicated. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the, that is, that it is, it could very well have been a blue robe. It's oh, just yeah, no, something that no, was arrived this, at. The, this um, saffron. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Your Grace, why do you feel that so many people are pulling away from the traditional religions in this country, such as Christianity and so forth, and going uh, for the uh, trying to understand the Eastern religions? We hear a lot of swamis and gurus and. Mm -hmm and uh, other type of um, yogi and so forth. Why do you feel that people are pulling away from the traditional Christian standards here? But uh, we, we see that the um, Christian churches, especially I've seen in London, mostly closed. People are not interested, or the Christian leaders, they cannot make them interested. Why? Did Christianity fail the people, which is why they're turning to other things? Or? I think so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You say that Hare Krishna consciousness uh, pretty much takes the absolute truths from the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, mm -hmm. and the Vedic. Yeah, everywhere. Everywhere. Re religion means to understand God. I understand, but do you feel that in, in getting truths from various places like the Bible and the Quran and so forth, don't you run into conflicts at all or contradictions in those particular philosophies? No, I don't find any conflict because the ultimate goal is God. So you have to understand God and try to love him. So you can go through any religious process. If the goal is attained, that you understand what is God, and you try to love him, then your life is perfect. Why do we see so many of your followers chanting um, yeah. almost all the time? Chanting means to keep association with God always. So you have to audibly chant yeah. Hare Krishna? Yes. Yeah. This is, this is uh, transcendental, transcendental vibration. Just like uh, a radio message, if you keep contact with the radio message, mm -hmm. Uh, then you know everything what is going on outside. Similarly, this transcendental sound, Hare Krishna, if you chant, then you keep connection with God directly. Thank you very much, um, Your Divine Grace. It's Thank been you. our privilege to, to talk with you and to meet you. Thank you. Very and hope that we can see you again when you return. Hare Krishna. Yeah. We'll be back with more news in just a moment. We were also able to obtain some candid footage of Swami Prabhupada going about his daily activities, and we found that there is a remarkable consistency between his private life and his public life.
are receiving the transcendental knowledge through Guru Parampara, succession. Uh, <coughs> so we have to simply take instruction from Guru, and if we execute that to our uh, heart and soul, that is success. That is practical. Uh, I have no personal qualification, but I simply try to satisfy my Guru. That's all. Uh, my Guru Maharaj asked me that if you get some money, you print books. Therefore I am stressing on this point. So kindly help me. This is my request. Uh, print as many books in as many languages and distribute throughout the whole world. Then Krishna consciousness movement will automatically increase. That Supreme Lord He is omnipotent, omniscient. He knows everything. But the living being uh, does not know actually what is the position of the Supreme Personality of God. That is the difference between the Supreme Personality of God and ordinary living being. My father wanted me to become like this. Know everything what is going on. <laughs> he never wanted me to be a worldly man, earning money. He never wanted. Sarvapadhi binin muktam tatparatena nirmanam. Rishikena rishikesha sevanam bhakti rishchat. When we become free from these artificial designations, American consciousness, Indian consciousness, African consciousness, there is no such thing. This is artificial. Even bird and beast, they, are, they also feel consciousness. 
expense and pleasure. Huh? Just like when there is scorching heat, you feel some pain. Is that American, Indian, or African? Scorching heat is every feeling. Uh, if you say that I am feeling scorching heat, American way. Kyoji. 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 Western world, the younger generation were being frustrated with the hippie movement. So when they saw something tangible, they accepted it. Do you, what, what things would, if, if everyone in the United States believed in, uh, in Krishna to the, and to the extent that you do, what would happen to this country? What would, how would it be transformed? Uh, oh, they would be very happy and peaceful. <laughs> there would be no more hippies. <laughs> <laughs> What, what, what would you describe as a hippie? Someone who smokes. You know better than me. <laughs> Something extraordinary. <laughs> so you may love humanity, but because you do not love Krishna, therefore do not love the cows you send them. So your love will remain defective. It will never be complete. And if you love Krishna, then you love in this small ant. He will not interest him to kill him with an ant. That is real love. Now Gopal Krishna in India requested that BBT hmm. give him a loan of $160,000. In India, just this during the Mayapur festival, he requested a loan from a US BBT uh -huh. for $160,000, which would be used to construct the uh, second residence building. How will you pay His plan was that the American temples would purchase rooms and over a period of four or five years, they would pay that money back. So is that still approved by you, by your divine grace? Yes, I know. The only thing is that we will have to delay the loan because for the next three months, all our money will be used to print these 17 books. Hustable books, then the loan. However, we cannot hold a uh, printing, that is not possible. This you must always keep in view. We are not going to uh, the surplus money we are going to pay. Not that at the cost of stopping printing. You must always keep it. When you require money for printing, there is no question of loan at temple. Bill. This will be our Dr. Stilson Judah is Professor Emeritus at the University of California at Berkeley. His field is the history of religion. We asked Dr. Judah to tell us about his association with Swami Prabhupada. The International Society for Krishna Consciousness is a bona fide movement. It is a movement which is actually older than that of Christianity. The worship of Krishna is uh, one which is extremely popular in India. It is one of the great religions of India uh, at the present time as it has been throughout all of the years of history. One of the questions most asked by people is whether Hare Krishna is just a passing fad or is it really here to stay? Next week we're going to try and get all the answers. 
Will Hare Krishna survive through the 80s? What happened to the movement after the passing on of their leader, Swami Prabhupada? And what kind of worship do they have? Thank <laughs> you.